Welcome to the cosmic real estate market, where the prices are light years long, the properties are literally out of this world, and the neighbors? Let's just say, they might not be the friendly bake you a cake types. Let's cut the inspirational NASA montage crap and talk real talk about these so-called habitable exoplanets. Because what we've found out there isn't a shiny new Earth. It's a gallery of almosts, maybes, and oh god whys that'll make you clutch your oxygen tank in existential dread. Tonight, we're diving headfirst into the galaxy's biggest open house. Worlds of endless oceans. Twin suns baking alien deserts. Frozen wastelands colder than your ex's heart. And, maybe, planets where something with eyes, or eye like goo, is staring right back at us, pondering the same terrifying questions. Scientists love waving around the habitable zone, like it's a cosmic VIP section, where temperatures might allow liquid water. Key word? Might. Here's what they're not plastering on the posters. The shortlist, or should I say short-ish, because space is big and optimism is cheap. Right now, the crown jewel of maybe this won't kill us is Kepler-452b. It's been dubbed Earth's older, bulkier cousin. Orbiting a sun-like star 1,400 light years away, Paxnax, it sits smack dab in the Goldilocks zone, the cosmic sweet spot where water could exist. But brace for the May. It's 60% bigger than Earth, which might make the gravity a bit unforgiving. Think trying to jog with an elephant sitting on your chest. Next one on the list is Kepler-438b, the most Earth-like planet, with 500% more radiation frying its surface. Enjoy your Cancer sunset. Proxima Centauri b, our nearest Earth-sized neighbor, four light years away tidally locked with one side roasted and the other frozen solid. Pick your hell. Trappist 1e. A possible water world, orbiting a moody dwarf star that spits lethal flares weekly. Bring sunscreen, SPF 1 million. Then there's Trappist 1f and g. A delightful set of Earth-sized planets orbiting a dim red dwarf only 39 light years away, basically next door in space terms, but still a don't-forget-your-coffin-sized cryopod trip. These planets? They might have oceans, maybe atmospheres, but they're also getting a face full of stellar tantrums from their temperamental sun, which could strip any life, or beachgoers, right off the surface. The real contenders, and their deal-breakers. K218b. The Ocean Simp. What's sexy? First exoplanet with confirmed water vapor. What's cursed? A heisen world where oceans never end. No land, just endless storms over global abysses. Titanic phobias need not apply. TOY 700D. The Twilight Zone. What's cozy? Rocky, Earth-sized, and actually in its star's habitable zone. What's sketchy? Permanent twilight. One side always faces its red dwarf sun. Eternal sunset sounds romantic until you've had no morning for ten years. Gliese 581G, the gravity gulag. What's familiar? Potential liquid water. What's brutal? Gravity so strong you'd crawl everywhere. Also, zero proof it even exists. Astronomy's biggest ghosting story. Once upon a time, scientists believed planets outside our solar system would be rare, exotic beasts. Now, they're more common than YouTube reaction videos. We're realizing the universe is a giant junkyard of planets, from lava hellholes to ice giants to gas balloons you couldn't land on if you tried. But habitable Earth clones? Still super rare, still super precious, and still super theoretical. The kick in the space nuts. Here's the kicker, space cowboys. Maybe Earth 2.0 is out there. Maybe it's lush, alive, and blissfully unaware of capitalism. But finding it forces us to confront an uncomfortable truth. We already live on the most habitable planet we've ever found. And we're not exactly treating it like a precious cosmic jewel, are we? More like a rental car with no deposit. So, future home? Could we pack our bags and move to Kepler 452b? Sure. If you've got the tech to survive a 1,400 light year road trip, build cities under crushing gravity and terraform an alien biosphere that may or may not try to eat you. Even if we found Earth's identical twin tomorrow, it's unreachable. Proxima b would take 6,300 years with current tech. It's probably dead, 
Without a magnetic field like Mars, solar winds strip atmospheres like a cosmic scalpel. It might hate life. Oxygen isn't proof of aliens. It could mean runaway algae apocalypses. So we're better off fixing up this old Earth, at least for now. But keep your telescopes polished, folks, because somewhere beyond the glare of our sun, there might be a planet where something's already asking, are we alone or worse? Are we next? The universe wants life. Organic molecules are everywhere. Earth might be the weird one. Most planets are super-Earths or mini-Neptunes. We're the cosmic hipsters. Someone's probably out there. And if they're watching us, God help their anthropologists. Final verdict. Earth 2.0 isn't a place. It's a taunt. A cosmic carrot dangling just far enough to keep us starving. But hey, at least the view's pretty. Smash that like button before the universe smashes us first. And if you want more dark cosmic bedtime stories, subscribe or I'll tell you what's lurking around Proxima Centauri. And trust me, it's not good vibes. Comment below, which death planet would you risk it all for?